notable teams and how they'll perform this season. It is our bottom line segment, and we begin in the AFC. Payne Manning returns for his 18th season. John Fox is out as head coach, and Gary Kubiak comes in to replace him. The Broncos won 12 games last year, but lost to the Colts in the divisional playoff. Will, what is the bottom line for the Broncos this year? The bottom line for the Denver Broncos is that they will miss the playoffs. What? That's correct. Say what? If you have no offensive line, you do not make the playoffs. I look at this offensive line, and let me just read these names to you. Uh, Tyler Sembrilo, okay, rookie. Mm -hmm. Tackle. Mm -hmm. Evan Mathis, just came over from the Eagles. Matt Paradis, uh, just in his second year. Luis Vasquez, all pro, mm -hmm. got one there. Yep. And Ryan Harris on, at the right tackle. That is five guys who I think I believe it to this point have not played together, have not been on the field together, even through this exhibition season. A season, by the way, where Peyton Manning was sacked three times, straight up the middle. Now, Peyton Manning is notorious about getting that ball out in something like 2.6 seconds, but that's been a luxury. That's been sort of a, a superpower of his. This year, it's going to have to be a necessity. If that offensive line doesn't pull off a miracle and turn into a playoff caliber offensive line in that amount of time after not having been, been together in a division where everybody's better. Chiefs are better, I think. Raiders are better. Chargers are better. I see the Broncos ending up you think like nine those teams seven. are all better than the Broncos? No, better than they were last year, meaning oh, the, they're getting outs better. For the Broncos, okay, got it. meaning you don't cruise to got it. 11 and 5 or 12 just and 4. Clarify, you struggle you to saying, 9 and 7 mm -hmm. and miss the playoffs. The Raiders are better than the Broncos. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, my bottom line for the Denver Broncos is. And I tried to apparently be a little more clever than you on this. Oh. The dying of the light. Okay. I just, I'm with you on this in that they're trying to put this scheme in and all these pieces together to capitalize on the final years of who is an amazing, unbelievable QB, but with a lot of caveats right now. And you're talking about that old line, and we were just talking about this when you're doing zone blocking. Mm -hmm. A lot of times fans think like zones, whether in basketball or in football, mean that you can just plug and play, that it's easier. But a lot of times when you're doing zone stuff, it's like you gotta have you gotta all be on the same brain wavelength when you're doing something like that. And that takes more time than the guys and the, the experience that they have on that O line. And also when the Broncos did this back in the day in the late nineties with Shanahan and they had the, the amazing running game. And then they had Elway. What really put them over the hump was that Elway was able to just throw his body anywhere there at the end of those two seasons. I don't think Peyton's going to be able to do that. I don't think that's going to be able to happen for this team. And now I love that they have brought in this new scheme and they, they're doing everything they can this year to try and get the Broncos to the place that they think they can possibly be and squeeze the last amount of juice out of Peyton Manning. I just don't see it going that way for them. I think they're going to be really good through 10 games and then I just don't think, I do think they're going to get into the playoffs. I think they're out after the first game. We agree. What do you think? What's we your quick hit bottom line? Fatal I think they're going to be all right. I think they're going to hand it off a little more, and that'll give Peyton a break. I think their defense still stacked. And, I mean, he talked about it on SportsCenter. Obviously, the line has questions, but there's still a mix of vets and youth. I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay, too. I think they're going to be 11 and 5. I just think, I don't think that gets them anywhere. I think, 10 they're, six, I think they're going to the playoffs. I don't think that gets them anywhere once they're in the playoffs. We shall see, but we must move on. Sports happens. <laughs> Andrew, I, I love that. Andrew <laughs> Luck and the Colts have reached the playoffs in each of the first three seasons and reached the AFC title game last season. Luck adds weapons Frank Gore and Andre Johnson to the offense this season. So, Kate, what's the bottom line for the Colts? So close yet again. So close, but just not there. They're not there yet. And part of that is not even... That and the Colts, I mean, they have added every piece, a lot of names you mentioned, that they can possibly make to get this team to the Super Bowl. I mean, Pagano even said that he thinks he's got more talent on this roster than he's ever had. But what's going to happen at the, bo the bottom line for the Colts here is who are they going to run into? More than likely, they're going to run into the Patriots again when you're talking about getting to the playoffs. I obviously think the Colts are going to be great during the regular season. I think they're going to get to the playoffs. I think they're going to be playing great football. It's a timing issue for Andrew Luck right now and the Colts and Pagano. They just have a few more years they need to wait before the Patriots are not the Patriots anymore and Tom Brady is not Tom Brady anymore. I don't think the Colts have gotten better enough to the point that they're going to be able to clear that hurdle. You say it depends on who they run into and what I would suggest is hopefully not somebody who can run the ball. I look at the Colts a little bit like I do the Eagles 
in the mm. NFC in that they're good, they're going to make the playoffs, but they're overhyped. Everyone is on this bandwagon. And why wouldn't they be? Andrew Luck is great, and everyone is assuming Andrew Luck will take this to the next level. But football is still a team sport. And I watched last year as the Dallas Cowboys ran straight through the middle of the Colts' defense. Won that game 42-7. to Saw the Patriots beat the Colts 45-7. to Saw the Steelers put up 51 points against the Colts. I'm not worried about Andrew Luck's side of the ball. I'm worried about the other side of the ball. I know you get Robert Mathis back, but you got to stop the run. And right now, the Colts' defense would scare me if I was someone who was predicting them to go or to win the Super Bowl. They look like a good playoff team. Yeah, and that was their issue last year as well. Once you see them play the Patriots, it's like all confidence oh. goes oh. goes out oh. the door. Yeah, exactly. That's what you say if you're a Colts fan. You're like, oh, that's the comparison. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's move on to the Jets here, where it's already been an eventful camp for new head coach Todd Bowles. Geno Smith out with a broken jaw after taking that sucker punch during camp. The good news, however, Darrell Revis returns to anchor Gang Green's defense. Bottom line for the Jets here, Will. Bottom line for the Jets is Cardale Jones. They are in the Cardale Jones Bowl. Stop it. And the only thing more absurd than predicting the college national champion today <laughs> and the record for everyone's NFL teams is predicting where certain quarterbacks will fall in the draft 10 months from now. But the Jets look like one of the worst teams in the league to me. As I look through the league, I don't know how many teams you can comfortably say are worse than the Jets. The Jags? The Titans? The Redskins? The Browns? Maybe. Which puts them probably somewhere around 8 to 12 picking in the draft. And right now, the, the top quarterbacks are suggested to be Connor Cook from Michigan State, Christian Hackenberg from Penn State, and a guy who might not even be starting for his college team, Cardale Jones from Ohio State. I think the Jets need a quarterback, and I think they're going to be in a position to get one next year, early in the draft. Yeah, that division keeps getting better yeah. and better, all the other teams. And my bottom line is last place. And it would seem that I just wholeheartedly agree with Will on that. But saying last place is more of a discussion about the power of the AFC East and what I think are going to be just a group of really, really tough teams with the Patriots separated, but then everybody else sort of beating each other up. And so when I say the Jets are going to be last place, I still think they're going to, I still think they are a middle of the road NFL team. I don't think they're terrible. I don't think they're in the bottom three as you think. I think they've, they've added a lot of pieces that I like. I, I like Brandon Marshall yeah. a lot. I think especially his first year somewhere. He he plays electrifying football. And he makes Revis. Eric Decker better too. Yeah, Decker's a better number two. Right, exactly. So that wide receiving core. Now Ryan, the quarterback question. That you've got the great receiving core, and you think you're going to get solid quarterback play, and maybe that's what the Jets need with the defense that they're going to have. Yep. So I don't think they're going to be terrible, but I think in that AFC East, they're just not going to be able to rise above anybody else. Football's a zero sum game. If somebody's winning. Somebody's losing. But not always if the within Patriots the conference. Winning, if the Dolphins are better, if the Bills are better, somebody's losing. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sold on the Dolphins yet, though, either. No? No, not totally sold there, there either. I, I think if Ryan Fitzpatrick, if he can be a game manager, they could be a little better than we think. Because I think that defense is legit. How about Pittsburgh? Their defense? Uh, mm. I don't know. Big Ben probably had the one of the best offenses last year. Le'Veon Bell is coming off a monster year in 2014. And receiver Antonio Brown is arguably the best at his position. No more Dick LeBeau to lead the defense. So what is the bottom line here for the Steelers, Kate? We know they have a couple suspensions. Le'Veon's out the yeah. first two. And Mark Davis is out, I think, the first four. I, I My bottom line for them is outside looking in. Um, I think no playoffs. I don't think so, and I think the key there is just their schedule. It's the toughest schedule that any team's going to play in terms of like win opponent winning percentage, um, and their defense right now. I mean, giving up what last year gave up. You're, you're talking about the Colts' run defense not stopping anybody. I mean, 4.4 yards per carry for the Steelers. I didn't see these offseason upgrades that's going to lead me to believe that they're going to be able to to plug those holes. I mean, you've got. Ben Roethlisberger, and you're, you're not going to count. That offense is just electrifying. It's going to put up a lot of points, but they kind of have the same problem that I see my New York football Giants having in, in that I look on the defensive side of the ball, and I'm like, oh, they're going to have to put up. Giants are a hot mess. But yeah. That's a whole other story. Right. It, but you're like, Which we will get the, to. We will get to that. Pittsburgh, what are they going to put up? Like 30 points a game? Is that what's going to happen here? So I, I think with that schedule, it's going to really work against them. And, you know, if they're 9 and 7, that could mean no playoffs. Yeah, that, that division, AFC North, I mean, Cincinnati Bengals, Baltimore Ravens, 
Pittsburgh Steelers. I personally think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to come out of that. I think you'll find that the Cincinnati Bengals in the AFC Championship game against the Patriots. When you can run the ball like that, when you have offensive line like that, and a defense like that, that's the formula for winning games. I understand Andy Dalton's limitations, but that's a team. Now, I think the Steelers are a true wild card. And what I mean by that is it's going to be hard to tell what's going to happen with this team, and I think they will get the wild card. They'll get into the playoffs. Ben Roethlisberger's great. That offense is going to be good. It's so odd to think this is where the Steelers are. Like, you live on a reputation that trails about five years behind, and you think of the Steelers, and you think, defense, yeah, tough, right? Yeah, the steel curtain, of Run course. the ball. And this is going to be a Steeler team that throws the ball and plays poor defense. And they have been mm -hmm. for a couple years now. It just took us a while to, like, you know, It took us a little it. while to realize <laughs> and stop drafting them high in fantasy leagues. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, that's kind of uncharted territory for the Steelers. All offense, no defense. Wild card. I think they make the playoffs, but don't get very far. Those triplets are legit, though. Still taking Le'Veon Bell in my draft, regardless <laughs> of suspensions. All right, so uh, deflate. Take is brought to you by the Gillette Shave Club. Join the club now at GilletteShaveClub.com. And Jim Beam, make history. Tim Tebow had his final preseason performance last night. He played in the second and fourth quarter and was 11 for 17 passing for 189 yards with two touchdowns and one interception. But with the cuts looming for the Eagles, have we seen the last of Tebow in the NFL? Kate, we'll start with you. Nope. I think he is their number three quarterback. In fact, I think the storyline was coming in was that he had to win the job from Barkley. I actually never thought that. I thought that this was Tebow's job to lose. I thought Chip Kelly brought him in because he wanted Tebow. He wants that flexibility. He wants those options. He wants another guy in a two-point conversion to run his tricky plays. Tebow fits that mold for him. I think he's an eagle by the end of the day as well, because I don't think Matt Barkley is your quarterback of the future. So what's your upside with Matt Barkley? You might as well take Tebow, take the upside in the locker room, take the intangibles, keep him around. The question is this, though. If he's not an eagle by the end of the day, he might just be out of the NFL. Fly eagle. Is there or another team? Does he become the backup and take Sanchez's job? Dun, dun, dun. Everybody have an amazing manager. holiday weekend. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We'll see you on Monday.